today we are going to be speaking about anxiety. So I have been diagnosed with generalised anxiety disorder. Um, I've had it for about a year now, but that's just the diagnosis. Looking back on it, I think I've always been anxious um, since I was about 12, I think. I've been having panic attacks for about two years. Um, however, last year they got really bad. I would cry before I went to sleep. I would be sick. I would be sick after each meal. Um, I was sick anywhere up to like 12 times a day and it was awful. Um, I couldn't eat, couldn't sleep, couldn't do anything, um, couldn't leave the house. I ended up being off sick from work. I eventually had to leave um, because it wasn't fair on my colleagues. Really, really low time for me. People don't really understand anxiety unless you've had anxiety. Think of the worst time in your life. Um, maybe you've had a kid and the kid maybe got meningitis and you were told that maybe the child wouldn't make it. That sort of feeling, that sort of knot in your stomach, lump in your throat, sort of feeling sick with worry. Um, feeling um, or maybe you're close to a family member and maybe they went into hospital and you were told that they weren't going to make it or it was touch and go for a while that sort of sick worry um, is um, the closest feeling I can think of to anxiety so imagine feeling that every single day of your life um, and that's pretty much the best way I can describe it. It's an awful illness, I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy, it's horrific um, and debilitating. Um, when I was at work and seeing occupational health, um, they actually said to my work colleagues and my boss that they were going to have to treat it as a disability because it was that debilitating, it was being classed as a disability. Um, because I couldn't help it. There was nothing I could do. Um, I didn't know why I was an anxious at work. Um, there was just literally nothing, nothing I could do. And as much as people at work tried to understand they got a bit pissed off, which, you know, when you call in sick all the time, fair enough. Um, but they didn't really understand what I was going through. Um, it was just <clears throat> a really, really hard time on me and my partner as well. Um, we had no money. I had to go to work, but then I couldn't. And then I got signed off sick and I was paid sick pay, but... We were falling behind on rent. My parents didn't quite understand it either. Um, my parents said, why can't you go to work? Why why don't you just go in and see how you feel? But I was being sick at work when I would go in and then being sent home um, because I was working with vulnerable people and I wasn't able to pass anything on. As I said, it's hard for people to understand anxiety if they've never had it, which you can't blame them but I just want to sort of clear the air maybe and just sort of talk about some myths and some facts and how it affects people. It affects everyone differently. Um, so some people think that anxiety is caused by a bad experience or a stressful ordeal, which again isn't true. Um, much like depression, it can um, creep up on you or it can all hit you at once or it can be a lifetime thing that goes undiagnosed, like me. Another myth that anxiety will cause damage to the body. With panic attacks, most people get heart palpitations, a really tight, tight chest and rapid breathing, and it feels like you're having a heart attack, and it does, it's awful. But you can't pass out from a panic attack, it's very rare. It lasts usually about 20 to 30 minutes. If you do suffer from panic attacks, it's the fight or flight response. So basically all these hormones start pumping, including adrenaline, um, and your heart starts going like the clappers and um, for me it was 
that that made me feel sick, that made me sick. Um, not everyone is sick. Not everyone has panic attacks. And if they do have panic attacks, some people hyperventilate. Some people um, sort of isolate themselves. Um, some people choose to be quiet that day. It affects everyone differently. So you don't always know when somebody has anxiety. You could be sat at the dinner table next to somebody who's really anxious and not know. You could be sat next to somebody at work on a computer desk who is really anxious and really struggling and you may not know that they have anxiety. Um, th there's, no, there's no specific you have anxiety look <laughs> there there isn't one and as i said panic attacks aren't always hyperventilating some people may choose to throw themselves into work some people may not want to go home some people um may like stay late at work and they have anxiety there's loads there's loads of different um like ways of uh, dealing with it there are a few phrases that you should avoid when dealing with somebody with anxiety because Firstly, it's extremely annoying. And secondly, it doesn't help. Things like, this anxious feeling will pass. No, it won't. I am anxious now, and I probably will be for a long time. This anxious feeling will pass is great advice. Thanks for that. Thanks, for Captain Obvious. But it probably won't, because anxious people are 95% of the time anxious. And even if the anxious feeling does pass, it doesn't pass for long. And when it does, it doesn't matter that it's going to pass because that's not right now when I am anxious. I don't care that it's going to pass. I care about right now when I am feeling this way. Others include just get on with it. I can't. <laughs> um, stop worrying. Uh, this one's my favourite um, because it's stupid as fuck. Um, there was a newspaper article. It was terrible. Um, and it was... Um, 10 facts on beating anxiety or something stupid. Anyway, my dad gave it to me and was like, here, have a read, it might be helpful. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I'll give it a go. All 10 facts were basically a, a rephrasing of stop worrying. And then the 10th fact was stop worrying, just get on with it. If I could stop worrying, I wouldn't be anxious. And it's the fact that people say stop worrying as if, oh yeah, thanks for that. Yeah, I hadn't thought of that. I'll just flip the switch doesn't work like that. Can't stop worrying and telling me to stop worrying isn't going to help me. People don't want to feel worried. People don't want to feel anxious. Do you think if people could stop feeling that way that they would carry on feeling the way that they do? If they could stop, they would because it's awful. So it's just stupid. Don't ever, ever say that to anyone who's anxious or stressed or anyone ever it's just stupid and it irritates me to no end oh, it's just so fucking stupid fear of the unknown is how anxiety is categorized and that's a pretty good way to describe it in my opinion say you're at work it's friday and your boss pulls you to the side five minutes before leaving time and says i need to speak to you on monday with a serious face but doesn't say what it's about you're going to worry the whole weekend about what the hell that conversation is going to be about. You're still going to worry about it. You're going to be anxious about it. And that's anxiety, but with everything. If I'm having a panic attack, I need support. I don't need somebody in my ear telling me to calm down or stop worrying. Medication is a last resort and should be avoided. Another myth. Um, I am currently on medication for depression and anxiety. Talking therapy can also be used with anxiety. Uh, it just depends what works for you. Some people may need medication and no talking therapy. Some people may need talking therapy and no medication. It's entirely up to you and if you feel a medication isn't working, please tell your GP or your physician because it's so difficult to get them to understand how you're feeling. But you need to tell them. You need to tell them how you're feeling and make sure that they understand that it's not working for you and you need something else. Unfortunately, anxiety is probably a lifelong condition in most cases. 
Um, however, that doesn't mean that you're going to be on medication for the rest of your life or treatment for the rest of your life. It's not something that can be cured, but it's something that can be managed. Making sure that you can live the best quality of life that you can. Making sure that you're in control of your life with anxiety rather than anxiety being in control of your life. So you can still do things with anxiety uh, and manage those symptoms rather than not doing things and avoiding things completely because of your anxiety. So that's it for today. Um, I think, again, I've rambled long enough and um, I really hope that if you are suffering, you do get the help that you need. I will leave some links down in the description for support and resources um, if you are anxious uh, or you have anxiety or you know someone who does. Um, and thanks for watching.